we either we've forgotten or something's become mute. And I think some important issues relating to what I was saying to do with the petroglyphs and the idea of Kokopelli and the solar deities and the supreme splitting of the supreme being, as they call it. I mean, it's just a, I, I don't really like the idea of a supreme being, but it's the, it, I understand what they mean when they say it. Mm -hmm. The idea of God or oneness um, being, uh, being, being part of the process of, of a split between love and fear as such. There's a lot of connections with the sun and the way in which the sun has taken the earth through transformation, which is what we're going through now, as you probably know, with sunspot activity and, yeah. and, uh, and other things like Schumann cavity resonance. And, and the, all of this stuff relates to a time that we're entering into. And we're, we're, pretty, we're, we're actually in it, actually. We're in, we're in the zenith. You know, we're, we're right at the, at the point where the transformation is about to occur. It's, and, and for those people that aren't aware of that, then you only have to look around you because the way in which, which society is suddenly looking um, then you can tell by the signs and the fruits of the world that we're in. Really, it's very obvious. Yeah. I, my own feelings are that a lot of the, you know, a lot of the symbolism in the Bible and a lot of these uh, other images that we see in rock art, like we was mentioning earlier, do generally relate to an archetypal language. It's part of the oral tradition yes. and the um, and the codes and the the messages are, are probably more esoteric than than, than most would realise and. Um, and, and they're and not I, they're not literal as such. Maybe they're not not literal. Talk, no, yeah, not yeah. literal as such. I mean, some may well be literal, but there's a good majority of it that isn't literal, and it is symbolism. Mm. And I I can recommend a fantastic book for anybody who who's um, you know not come across it called The Thirteenth Stone by a chap called Reg Lewis. That was his pen name. The book I don't think is very is it, I think it's probably it might well be out of print. I'm not sure, but some of the um, references in that book relate to the fact that the uh, the, the biblical scholarship looks at the, uh, the the movement of stars and suns and and the and consciousness and some fascinating things in there relating to the sun entering the temple and the the, the correlations between the the so-called historical figure of Jesus entering the temple mm. and the turning over of the moneylenders and the crash of the economic system when the sun reaches a certain point in the in the in the temple which is the sacred tree which relates to the the galaxy and the Milky Way as the as the sun makes its journey as we make it our journey around the sun as such it's very very fascinating in that way mm. um so yeah um you know for me enric art has always been a, a, a focus a, a a way of seeing things that uh you know it's probably easier for to for for one to be able to open up what we call the third eye and and you know and see things truly as they are mm. as william blake said as they as they would be infinite and holy <laughs> There's two um, main points I want to uh, kind of take this dis uh, discussion into as well. And one area here right away is you mentioned before that some of the, uh, you know, you're depicting the unseen world. And, and this is in some cases then related to things that you've uh, felt or, or experienced in some way. And, and if we look at some of your illustrations and, and sketches and we, we can see almost like the um, sometimes a spiritual hierarchy or in some cases even the, this what I Term the spiritual conspiracy that we're actually being controlled uh, by this unseen hand the, b behind the veil of, of uh, normal sight. We, you, you can see um, in some cases even demonic figures almost uh, <laughs> controlling human beings and things like that. There, there, you have so much more positive art as well. But this is one area that that I, I find fascinating as well. Um, yeah. is that something that you've you've felt or, or, or in one way then seen when you're out and about, let's say when you were, were in your time in, in London there, could you see that people are in one way, they're being controlled almost by a demonic entities or where does that kind of imagery coming, uh, comes for, uh, from, Neil? Okay, well, well, it, it's, uh, it, it's interesting because the, the, the demonic side of it is, is something that is uh, almost archetypal. And for me, I, I have seen things in public. I mean, I have, I've walked around and seen stuff, but it, it's more about almost like reading a uh, a program, or seeing codes, or seeing seeing data rather than seeing uh, physical form in that sense. So the the way in which that can be uh, translated quite often through art is is through archetypal imagery, and the demonic stuff uh, or the reptilian stuff is um, in some ways is. Um, it's not a new thing, you know. It's 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 almost like a, a a form of a part of our language, like we have letters of the alphabet, and in some ways it it relates to a predator consciousness, in my view, which which is part of the splitting I was I was telling you about 
a moment ago, it relates to this idea of uh, fear. And if you were to able, able to visualize fear in its greatest forms, if you were to be able to take that and put that into a painting or into an image or whatever it is, then that demonic kind of looking imagery is a great way of illustrating it. Yes. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it takes on literal physical form, but, but then again, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist also. Because, you know, um, as, you know, as Blake said, um, to quote, he said, the prophets describe what they saw in, in visions as real and, and existing men whom they saw with their imaginative and immortal organs. So, you know, <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say, I suppose, is that for me, even though I will see something in, in, in life, in, in, in the so-called real world, it looks very different when it comes to um, become an image on paper yeah. because of the process it goes through. And uh, the, the, the control and the hierarchy, in some ways, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words. So what I've tried to do with my work over the years is, is sum this up in, in a way that would hit a resonance and speak orally. Um, through you know through the imagination through the third eye to anybody that would see it there is a structure to society the the left brain is structured and the whole of the matrix program that we live within is very much structured i mean i've been in education for years and rick and even the timetabling and the curriculums are called matrixes or matrices <laughs> Every, everything is structured in that way yeah. and it's because it's part of a, a wider program and no matter what people think, and that they have free will, and we have we have that freedom of choice, which is what we truly have. But the the genetics and the DNA and the programming is very much part of a greater program that has structure and hierarchy. And I think ultimately, the uh, the highest levels of this, the only reason why people are, are are living in the ways that they're living, and this is something that comes up time and time again. You know, the only reason why we're living and going to work or sending our kids to school is more out of fear and survival. Yes. That's, that's the real reason. No matter what we like to dress it up as, no matter what we want to call it, we call it education, and often not it isn't education, it's total indoctrination and, and, and mind control. Um, we're, we're only doing it because it's within our genetics to do it. And that's why the, our, our ancestors and the Aboriginal people had such a hard time when the so-called predator consciousness arrived, a bit in physical form as such, like, uh, you know, whether it was the likes of the... Um, uh, Columbus and, he, and, he, and, the and these whites or conquistadors the, yes. or whoever it was, yes. um, it took physical form, but it was still a predator. Hmm. And a predator, no matter, you look at the dictionary definition of a predator, and, and it, 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 well, it doesn't matter whether it's a monetary system, a political system, whatever it is, it takes a physical form. And that physical form, our Aboriginal ancestors had a real hard time with. Um, to the point of their, their, their worlds and their communities being totally devastated and destroyed and removed, reprogrammed. Mm. That, that was the name that was used, reprogrammed. You know, they were, they were replaced. The Trail of Tears, for example, in the Americas. Yeah. And, uh, and, I mean, and all the other endless examples of genocide that we've seen in the past 500 years or more. And still continuing to And still degree. going on, yeah, yeah. Let, let, yeah, still going on. And it's still going on in many ways because it's part of an old program. Sorry to cut you off, but I just want yeah. to ask you this then. Do you think that that also then is part of a, if I can put it this way, a, the bigger program that this has been in one way meant to happen? Because you referred to earlier as these different levels of experience and, and in one way, uh, maybe the, even the splitting up of the supreme being that you mentioned before is part of that, of a bigger program in one sense that we're, we've been ta we've been taken down this route uh, in order to come out the other end. Do you think that's true, or do you think it's just from a point of view that this is evil and wrong and is not meant to, to be this way? What do you think? I think there's a bit of both going on. I, I, I think that there's not the, the world that we call the, the, you know, the laws of nature is very much part of that program, that wider world. And there's nothing, you know, there's nothing necessarily um, beautiful and, and lovely about animals tearing each other up or us killing each other in that way, whether people think it's the laws of nature or not. It, it's, for me, the splitting, the supreme being, is something that um, was almost part of the upgrade, the, 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 the rift, the, the shock to the system that human consciousness experienced. And the true understanding of human consciousness is very much what Blake and others called the divine human form. 
and this is where the imagination in my mind is the nearest thing you'll get to understanding the the the, the expansiveness and the the infinite infinite understanding of what we would call god 